In this video, I want to explore some tips about becoming anxiety symptom free. If this sounds good to you, then stick around. And if you want to support my channel, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get into it. So many people do not seem to understand anxiety. Many people seem to think that it's just about changing the way we think. Firstly, I want to point out that anxiety is not just about changing the way we think. If we want to overcome anxiety and anxiety symptoms, we need to address anxiety from a cognitive, behavioral and physiological perspective. We also need to become aware of our beliefs because our beliefs are what drive our thoughts and behaviors. There are two stages for anxiety recovery. The first stage is to become anxiety symptom free. The second stage is to address our core beliefs that drive our anxious thoughts and behaviors. It is essential to do this because if we don't, we will continue to think and behave in ways that cause anxiety. If we don't address our core beliefs, we can only expect that anxiety will keep rearing its head time and time again in our lives. Today though, I want to address this first stage of becoming anxiety symptom free and talk about some ways to achieve this. Now, I want to make it clear that we are talking about accepting your symptoms, not necessarily about accepting yourself as a person. This isn't about standing in front of a mirror exclaiming how much you accept yourself. It's about being okay with your symptoms being there. Anxiety and anxiety symptoms thrive on fear. Fearing our symptoms is the same as feeding our symptoms we can consciously choose to accept rather than fear them. This is about not resisting your symptoms and embracing them. I have said it in my other videos that fearing, fighting and resisting the symptoms will only make them grow and persist. I would definitely suggest looking up some books and videos by Dr. Claire Weeks. She goes into great detail about the importance of total acceptance being the key to becoming anxiety symptom free. We need to understand that we need to allow the symptoms to be there, to feel them, to get used to them and to even befriend them. You are not going to get very far by saying, but I want my symptoms gone today. Now, this is not realistic and you will not become anxiety symptom free with this kind of intolerant and resistant attitude. Trust me, I used to be the worst offender. In order to become symptom free, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. The more intolerant of your symptoms that you are, the more life you are breathing into the symptoms. If you are waiting for these symptoms to go away before you do something such as going to a party or giving a speech or whatever, it's not going to happen. You need to do what you are afraid of in spite of the presence of your symptoms. Yes, this means asking out that girl that you like while you feel your heart palpitating. Yes, this means giving a speech while your legs are trembling. Yes, this means talking to your boss about a raise in spite of your hands sweating and feeling like you are going to stop breathing. Do you think that Tiger Woods doesn't feel adrenaline pumping through his veins during a golf championship? Do you see him packing up his bag and leaving the course? No. Like the psychologist and author Susan Jeffers says, you need to feel the fear and do it anyway. Again, anxiety is caused by a fearful approach to life. If you do something in spite of your fear, you are no longer reinforcing your anxiety. You are essentially breaking the anxiety cycle. 
many people put their lives on hold because of their anxiety and their anxiety symptoms. This is exactly the kind of fearful behavior that will make your anxiety persist. You need to live your life and let your anxiety and symptoms come along for the ride. If we can begin to live our lives like this, then anxiety and anxiety symptoms will reduce and inevitably disappear over time. Yes, over time. Anxiety recovery can take a long time. It can take months. It can take years. It is essential you give up caring how long recovery takes. Recovery will take as long as it takes and you need to be okay with this. A cut on your hand will take time to heal. You can't put a time frame on when you would ideally like it to happen. But the more flexible that your attitude is, the quicker you will see results. Now, you might think that this sounds illogical, but let me ask you this. Has being intolerant of your symptoms helped them to go away? Why not just allow your symptoms to be there while you get on with your life and see what happens? Reverse psychology is key when dealing with anxiety. When we first begin to experience anxiety symptoms, our brain seemingly tricks us into fighting with our symptoms. How many of you fight with your symptoms and wish that they would go away? Does it work? It took me years to realize that fighting with anxiety and anxiety symptoms only makes things worse. Once I realized the counterintuitive nature of the mechanics of anxiety, I decided to use reverse psychology to combat my symptoms. The more you tell your symptoms to go away, the more they will grow and persist. Why not start telling yourself that you are fine with experiencing your anxiety and symptoms? Sounds crazy, right? Well, it's actually very logical if you know how anxiety works, which is counterintuitively. Some of the things I would say to myself are, okay, there's this feeling of needing to pee. There's my heart palpitating again. There's my legs feeling like jelly. It's nothing new. It's a part of me. It's nothing to be concerned about. It's just a feeling. This symptom is just a sign that my body is overstressed. I guess I need to work on reducing my stress more. You know what? I am glad that these symptoms pop up every now and then to remind me to reduce my stress. Can you see the counterintuitive strategy here? The exact words that you use are not important. What is important is to develop an attitude of underreactivity to the symptoms. The more you can underreact and even see your symptoms as a good thing, the less life you are breathing into the symptoms. Overreacting is like throwing fuel onto the fire, and underreacting is like letting the fire gradually fizzle out. The more you can underreact to the symptoms, the quicker the anxiety symptom fire will fizzle out. Stress and anxiety symptoms go hand in hand. The more you can reduce your stress, the more easily you will find accepting your symptoms. When people's stress levels are incredibly high, their symptoms will be more intense and more frequent. The intensity of these symptoms can make it feel that accepting your symptoms is impossible. I know how this feels. If your stress levels are through the roof, then accepting your symptoms will be close to impossible. Have you ever noticed that your symptoms are more intense and more frequent when you are under a lot of stress? Okay, so wouldn't it make sense that if you reduced your stress that your symptoms would be less intense and less frequent? Okay, so we need to reduce our stress as much as possible. 
because as we reduce our stress, our anxiety symptoms also become less intense and less frequent. This then makes them much easier to tolerate and accept. But how do we reduce our stress? There are so many ways and I want to share some of those ideas with you today in the form of a PDF chart that I have created. I have called it the daily choice chart. I want to keep these videos as brief as possible. So I have created this chart to help complement this video. I have left a link for the daily choice chart in the comment section. This chart will help you to learn to make healthier choices, to be more logical, less emotional, more relaxed, less stressed with far less anxiety and anxiety symptoms. If you are serious about anxiety recovery, then I highly suggest downloading this chart and even printing it off. Put it somewhere where you will see it every day. You could put it up on the fridge or near your computer, or if you don't have a printer, then perhaps you could make it the wallpaper on your computer, or you could even perhaps screenshot it on your phone for quick reference. Now, I don't want you to think that you need to follow this chart to the letter. I don't always manage to follow it perfectly either. This isn't about perfection though. Nobody is perfect and I'm not perfect either. This is also not the be all and end all for overcoming from your anxiety and symptoms. This is simply to give you some ideas of what has worked for myself and what works for my clients. I have no doubt that it will work for you too if you apply it in your life. If you can even change a few of these things, then you can expect to see a reduction in your anxiety, anxiety symptoms, and your overall stress levels over time. Yes, over time. Anxiety recovery takes time. I have said it in other videos and I'll say it again. There are no quick fixes. Please do not strive for perfection with this chart or be impatient. This will only be an added stress which will subsequently influence your level of anxiety. We aren't trying to get rid of our anxiety or our anxiety symptoms here. We are learning how to create a less stressful internal and external environment that is conducive to recovery. Looking at this through the lens of trying to get rid of your anxiety will only make your anxiety worse. This is about making better daily choices that will result in your anxiety, anxiety symptoms, and stress reducing over time. Please take this one step at a time and be kind to yourself throughout the process. You are learning crucial skills that will help you for the rest of your life. There is no rush. The saying slow and steady wins the race really applies here. Finally, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this one, then please subscribe to this channel. I would also really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and please consider sharing this video with anyone who you think would benefit from this kind of information.